Today I want to do a brief test on handling noise with handheld mics. When you do Google searches for handling noise with your microphone, you get a lot of results for how to handle the noise or how to deal with the noise, which might be background noises, self noise, and so on. But I'm talking specifically about the noise of your hands touching the mic. Let me give you an example. Now, to my ears, that's unacceptable. And in the course of recording my podcast, I've found this noise coming up again and again, and I found it very hard to deal with. The number one suggestion people have is to not handhold your mics, it's to use a mic stand. However, I'm always carrying my podcast set up in my backpack. I've got two cameras, two tripods, two microphones, the recorder, sometimes my laptop and its charger. So if I could avoid adding two more things to that kit, two stands, that would be great. I based my podcast setup on Tim Ferriss's podcast setup. So that's a Zoom H6. And he uses the classic Shure SM58. Now I deviated from that. I used the upgrade, the Beta 58A. It's supposed to have a little bit more clarity up top, more side sound rejection because the polar pattern is a little bit more hypercardioid. And it's supposed to have a hotter signal, so less self noise or less um, preamp noise, which all sounded like good things. But I hear far less mic handling noise in Tim Ferriss's podcast. So I've borrowed a SM58. And today I want to compare and contrast these two microphones. And you're going to want to be wearing headphones to really appreciate these tests. You won't hear a lot of the handling noise without headphones because your laptop speakers won't have the low end to reproduce those sounds. Also, I do some stereo separation in some of these tests. So you'll find that the Beta 58 sounds are coming in this year, uh, probably on your right. And the SM58 in the left headphone, this one. So they're both peaking at about negative 12 dB. Um, I have the Beta 58 set to about 5, and the SM58 set to about 5.7 on the Zoom H6. Enough of the talking, it's all about the handling noise, right? So let me just move my hands around a little bit. I think you can see in the last segment the kind of levels we're getting with the voice after I normalized them versus the amount of um, noise we were getting. Pretty consistently, I'm having about 10 decibels more handling noise on the Beta 58A than I am with the SM58. Now, what's that going to mean in practical terms? I'm going to do my best to clean it up on the computer to see how usable each of these audios are. Anyways, let's look at it. First, I have the SM58. This was just the vocal part of one of the recordings that you heard already. 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I... So you can see most of the energy where this bright yellow is, is between 100 hertz and 500 hertz. And let's look at the noise profile of the same recording. It's not as uh, bright. Again, remember the SM58 had about 10 decibels lower handling noise. Let's go ahead and look at the Beta 58's noise. It's in the same range as the SM58, but you can see it's much more intense. And its intensity is focused at around 100 hertz, but it also goes as high as 
you know, really 700, even 800 hertz at times. So part of the reason why it's going to be hard to clean this up is you can't just do a high pass filter rolling off the frequencies below 100 hertz. You're still going to have a lot of the energy in there above 100 hertz. And the, the farther you try to remove that, the more hollow you're going to make the voice sound because you're taking away so many of the core frequencies that give the voice a warmth or a presence. Still, let's see what we can do. I took these waveforms and I combined them. Uh, so here we have the SM58 with the spoken word and the handling noise over top of each other. And again, I've also done the same thing with the beta 58 here, the same section of speech with the beta 58's handling noise overlaid on top of it. The reason I did this is because it's going to be easy enough to turn off the mic when you're not speaking, but what about the handling noise that's happening while you're speaking? For example, I'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice, and um, when I just move my hands, let's get some tests on. That can be super distracting for your audience. That was the beta 58. Now let's hear it with the SM58. I'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I just move my hands, let's get some tests. It's already way better without doing any processing at all. Just the fact that the signal to noise ratio is better. We're in a better starting spot. So I've experimented with a few different ways of cleaning the sound up, and I'm going to show those to you now. Okay, case in point about a simple noise gate. Here I've got a noise gate applied to the SM58 and a noise gate applied to the Beta 58A. And you'll hear in these sections where I'm not talking, we'll have silence, but we're still going to hear microphone noise while I'm talking. Here's an example. Speaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I just move my hands, let's get some tests on the... Uh... So that's, I think, still pretty distracting. And one could argue not very usable with the Beta 58. However, you'll see with the SM58 that... I'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I just move my hands, let's get some... So there's no additional processing going on here. There's no noise reduction. There's no high-pass filter, just a noise gate. And already the SM58 seems pretty usable at this point. Let's see how much further we can uh, push this. Here's another test I did using kind of a fancy tool called isotope rx7 and they have this kind of repair assistant where they give you some suggestions about what to do and the one that sounded best was basically it's the vocal isolation and here's what it came up with kind of just as like a one click filter on uh, the two different audio sources first with the sm58 i'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when i raise my voice and um when I just move my hands, let's get some tests on the... I mean, that sounds pretty good already, right? Just in addition to that, if we applied a gate, we wouldn't have the uh, little bit of sound we have between the things. However, it struggled a lot more with the Beta 58. I'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I just move my hands, let's get some tests. So even though it is struggling, uh, because it's not a very aggressive filtering, at least my voice still sounds pretty good. Now I want to show you an example of trying to clean it up using a very common workflow, uh, which you can accomplish in free applications, which would be, again, a combination of first doing some noise reduction. So take a section where you only have the handling noise and learn that noise profile apply it to the whole clip, not too aggressively, because you're going to ruin the sound if you do. And then in addition to that, in EQ, where you roll off the low end, like from 100 or 115 down pretty aggressively, 
if you go any higher than that, you're going to hollow out the voice and it doesn't sound good. And finally, also the noise gate. So I've done that with both clips. And here's what we get. First, the uh, SM58. I'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I just move my hands, let's get some tests on the... Uh, I mean, that sounds fantastic, right? And uh, a similar processing to the Beta 58A. I'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I just move my hands, let's get some tests on the, uh, the handling noise. I'm going to move them about the same. Now, you can hear in this one, my voice sounds pretty good. You still have the handling noise. Any attempts I made to further reduce the handling noise resulted in really distorting the voice, making it sound like it was being flanged, robotic, tinny. So this is kind of like what you're going to have to live with, the handling noise. I'm going to move them about the same, and then I'll compare the waveforms in an audio editor afterwards. And I don't think that's too horrible. I mean, in only very rare cases would you or your guest be making noise so consistently throughout the recording. Okay, here's the last example from here. I'm peaking at about negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. And um, when I just move my hands, let's get some tests on the, uh, the handling noise. I'm going to move them about the same, and then I'll compare the waveforms in an audio editor afterwards. Oh, so to clarify, the previous example, I was using a denoise function in RX7. And uh, this second one is using the noise reduction that comes with Reaper, which is a very affordable audio software. And you can see it's nowhere near as effective at isolating the voice and reducing the rumble. Negative 12 in both these mics when I raise my voice. In fact, uh, the rumbling is quite loud in this example. And um, I think the voice sounds a little bit more tinny as well. When I just move my hands, let's get some tests on the, uh, the handling noise. I'm going to move them about the same, and then I'll compare the waveforms in an audio editor afterwards. You know, every stand-up comedy special I've watched, I don't hear any handling noise. They're using one of these two mics normally. And even when they're using the, the Beta 58, I'm not hearing handling noise. So why is that? Well, I think that they're probably talking louder. They're projecting on stage. So let me adjust the trim and uh, kind of project what I, how I might talk if I was on stage. How's everybody doing tonight? I just flew in from Osaka, and boy, are my arms tired. How's everybody doing tonight? I just flew in from wherever, and boy, are my arms tired. One last test. 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 Testing. I decided to try my Beta 58A out on a mixer and hi-fi system. Initially, I did some tests where the low was completely cut and the gain wasn't too high, testing, and testing. almost all the handling noise was absent. I think in the context of that live environment, the voice did not sound hollow. Perhaps testing, my testing. body's real voice's bass was filling in the space. Uh, definitely when you put the lows testing. to a medium setting, the noise was as testing. present as it is in these recordings, maybe even more so. And definitely once the gain was brought up to a decent amount of amplification, we were getting the same kind of results in the, in the PA system as we were in my recorder. So I hope you found these tests to be interesting, maybe even helpful. Definitely, if you're planning to do a podcast with a handheld microphone after these tests, I would say steer clear of the Beta 58A. Go with the cheaper, more standard SM58. Um, but make sure you don't get a counterfeit one. There are, that does seem to be a, an issue. If you have any ideas about ways to better process these sounds or why you don't hear these kind of handling noises 
in most uh, stand-up comedy routine sets, for instance, please let me know down in the comments because this is a problem I've been theorizing about and beating my head against the wall for uh, months now. And I'm not an expert in audio, so thanks for listening. And in my first, let's say, uh, 16 podcasts, if you happen to hear any uh, handling noise, please forgive me. Great. Thanks a lot and see you later.